By the end, you will have a customizable Toast message component exactly like this one that you can use anywhere in your React application. We will create this without installing any popular libraries such as React Toastify or React Hot Toast. Let's start. I have an empty React project with a button in the middle. The goal is to press the button and it should trigger a Toast message. In the components folder, we create three files, toast.tsx, toast.css, and toastcontext.ts. I'm gonna write all the necessary code in these three files. First, we start with toast.tsx and import the styling file so we don't forget. Let's create our basic Toast component, which is going to take in a message and a close function as its props. We render the message in a p tag and also a button. I'm going to give this button the Unicode value of a cross to keep things simple. Let's also give this container a class name of Toast so we can style it later. Give the button a class name of close button so we can style that as well. Add the close function as an on click on the button so we can close the toast. Define the types for this component. The message is going to be a string and close is going to be a void function. Now that we have defined our basic toast component, let's head over to the toast context file and create some context for the toast messages using the create context API in React. This will allow us to handle and update our toast messages anywhere in our application. We will define its types and initially give it a value of null because we are going to set it later. The context value is going to be two functions, open and close. Open will take in a message to render and close will take in an ID to close the toast. In the same file, export a use toast hook so we can import it anywhere and use it whenever we need. We are now fully done with this file and can leave it alone for the rest of the video. Go back to the toast.tsx file and now we are going to build a toast provider component that is going to be at the root level of the project. The only prop it's going to have is children, which are going to be React elements. Import the toast context that we created and return the children inside the toast context provider. Let's save that and define our types for this component because we are in TypeScript. Now let's actually start the work on managing our toast messages. Create a state for your toasts. This is going to be an array of toasts that are going to have an ID and a message. In this component, alongside the children, we're going to map the toast messages array and render the toast component we created for each one of these messages. In this component, we pass the message and the close function we haven't created yet to remove the toast message. Save and format. We are very close to finishing this component and rendering our messages. Let's create the two functions to open and close our messages. This is what the two functions look like. The open function creates a new toast and the ID I give it is the current date. This is so each toast is always unique with their ID. And the close function takes that ID and filters it out of the toast messages array and updates the state. Put the two functions in an object and use useMemo so we can cache the functions, saving some computing power. Add the context value inside the provider and now we are ready to use this component. Go to the root level of your project. In my case, this is the main.tsx file and wrap your whole app component tree by the Toast provider we created. Now these functions are available everywhere throughout the app and we can render our Toast messages. Let's now test this by going back to our button in app.tsx file. Import the Toast using the use Toast hook and on the on click of the button, try toast.open with a message. We should see a Toast message rendering. All that is left is styling now. Before we go to the CSS file, in our Toast provider component, wrap the Toast mappings in a div and give it a class name of Toasts so we can style them. Now let's go over to our CSS file and first style the Toasts container. The main thing here to note is that we want this to always be in the top right position. So I give it a position of fixed and adjust it accordingly. You can place it bottom right, bottom left, top left, wherever you like, by using the position fixed attribute. I also want each toast to have a little gap between them. So I use the flexbox to achieve that gap. Once we have the container styled as we wish, let's work on the actual toast message. Give it a color you like and want your website to have, border radius and your desired width. Also style your button using the close button class name. 
Once we have styled the toast message how you like, let's add an animation to it. We add the animation by giving it the property of animation name. Also add an animation duration property. I want this animation to be 0.35 seconds long. Then you create keyframes with the animation name. And this is how you achieve the sliding animation by changing the translate x values. The toast message looks great, but there is one last thing missing and that is the toast message auto closing after some time. Let's implement that by going back to our toast.tsx file. To achieve auto closing, we need to create one last custom hook and call that in our toast component. We will call this use timeout. This is what the custom hook looks like. It takes in a callback function and stores it in a use ref. Every time the function updates, we update the reference value. The callback function is then run in another use effect after the component successfully loads. This means that each toast message will only automatically close once it fully renders. Time for a final test and now you can see that all the toast messages close by themselves after 3 seconds. You can watch how to build a tooltip component by clicking on the video on the right, otherwise thank you.